Here we have my 2008 Audi A4 door lock module on the left hand side front door. Um, you can see I've got the door card off already. Um, the problem with the door lock module is the exterior handle doesn't work. Um, so I'm hoping to figure out exactly what's going on with the door lock module stopping it from working. So when the vehicle is in the lock, the, with the door latch shut, and the vehicle in the lock position, obviously neither interior or exterior cables, the exterior cable uh, is there. The port obviously didn't even do anything. Double unlock the car, which should unlock the passenger door lock module. Um, exterior handle still does nothing, but the interior will release the door lock module. So that's the problem I've got. If the car is obviously um, left like this now, well, if basically if I if I close the door again, put the latch into the lock position, the exterior handle will now release. But once the vehicle has been locked and unlocked again, the handle well, put it back into the lock position. The handle stops working again. So once it's been locked and unlocked, the exterior handle stops releasing the latch. The interior keeps working, just not the exterior. So I'm going to strip the lock module down, see if I can find out exactly what the issue is. So we've got the dust cover off here of the uh, door lock module. You can see a little bit better on what's going on inside the module. This is the exterior cable again. You can see the actuation. This is in the locked position, so it obviously won't actuate the uh, yellow this yellow piece of plastic, the actuator plunger will push this up so that the exterior handle latch will push on the yellow um, plunger and push this whole mechanism over. Um, we've also got a similar actuation here from the interior handle, but it actuates from a different position. Um, interestingly, we can see, this is obviously in, in the single lock position, but we can also see the deadlock feature of the car. Um, so with a single lock press this is the the mode the state that the lock module will return to uh, i don't know if you can just see there's a little black arm running along in here and between this is just pressing the lock button we've got um, non-deadlocked and deadlocked so when it's like that the uh that's sorry that's there goes the alarm it's locked <laughs> so that's the um deadlock arm position is like that where the car cannot be opened from inside and then a double press will put it into a non-deadlocked um, state where the car can in fact be opened from the interior handle um, so that's that's interesting but it's it's obviously nothing to do with my problem my problem here is the this plunger here the yellow part is not coming up and down which is preventing this mechanism from engaging with anything. Um, so if we put the striker back into its closed position and I lock the vehicle, the plunger will go up. When I unlock it, the plunger doesn't come back. And I think that's the that's the problem with the vehicle. The lock module is it's not returning that yellow plunger for whatever reason when the vehicle is unlocked, which stops the module from opening. So I'm going to delve a little deeper into the mechanism and see if I can... This mechanical part here is completely separate to the electronics and gearbox module. You take four screws off. Um, there's two on the front here somewhere. I can't remember where. And two on the back. Um, so I've put one back in there just so it's not even wobbling about just so I could have a, a, a quick look on what the mechanism's doing when it's when it's operating. It's helpful to, to see what's happening inside. Um, yeah, it, it. So I've got the electronics portion of the door lock module separated out from the mechanical portion of the door lock module. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit tricky. You have to get these two um, clips just off of these actuator arms off of the yellow and green actuator arms in here they don't come off that easily 
don't think I've broken anything. Um, there's also the uh, arm from the uh, deadlock, which unclips as well from the mechanical part. I could probably go back on. I don't think that really needs to come off, but it, it did while I was repairing it. Um, so the actuator I'm interested in is this one here, which isn't actuating for whatever reason. So I'm going to dig deeper in, take all these screws off around here, get the gearbox cover off, and see what's actuating this, whether it's a motor or a servo arm or, or something. Let's see what's going on there. So we've got the motor out here responsible for the actuation of the arm that's not working and uh, you can see the resistance is pretty high kick it over to a different pole 18 17 ohms kick it to a different position let it settle at 30 30 ohms 30 ohms I would expect this motor to be less than 10 to be honest so there's some pretty serious dead spots going on sometimes it's fairly low impedance and then you move it let it settle and it's double so it's looking like a dead motor the motor is situated inside the gearbox it's the one on the right here by my thumb that's where the motor should go which is responsible for the orange actuator which is in turn responsible for the exterior um, lock handle being engaged and disengaged. So the motor that's responsible for that looks like it's gone open circuit. It could just be a dirty commutator. It's coming up pretty nice there, again back to bright copper. Um, one thing I will say is when you have cleaned the commutator, what you want to do is get a scalpel blade and just run it be between the gap in the commutator fingers here, just so that any of the carbon uh, is not shorting between the, the fingers because it will reduce the uh, motor efficiency because it creates resistance between the poles and uh, removes power from the commutator windings. Um, yeah, it looks like it's cleaning up okay. The commutator doesn't look too badly worn. So, should hopefully be rebuilt, rebuildable. So, motor rebuilt and back together. We now have got a reading of 11.2 ohms. And if we turn it, unlike before where it was varying wildly, it now stays around. 10, 11 ohms. Obviously, as you turn the motor, the um, value reads because you're effectively inducing a small voltage into the meter, so it will read a bit, a bit of a funky impedance when you turn the turn the motor. You see, I'm just nudging it over just a just a hair each time, and that's staying nice and consistently around about 10 or 11 ohms, which is much much better than what it was before. What I'll do now is just run the motor up on a 9 volt battery. Just run it for 30 seconds or so just to let the brushes bed in. And we'll put it back in the door lock module and hopefully I haven't broken any of the mechanical parts. We um, should hopefully have fixed the problem for free. Okay, so my bad. Um, watching back through the previous video, I realized I actually repaired the wrong motor. Um, the other motor was was working. Obviously, the commutator was contaminated, and it wasn't optimum, but it was actually operating correctly. Um, this motor, however, is the the larger of the two, and it's responsible for the locking and unlocking function, um, the, the the opening function, and 
as you can see there is a huge dead spot part of this motor it's up to 150 ohms there and it goes to uh, almost well there you go 1.2k in one, one position of the motor so probably same same story again it's not a problem i'll just strip down both motors and do a full rebuild on both of them and uh, i should hopefully fix the problem guys so I'll uh, go for round two on, on this bad mama. So, second time's a charm because I've obviously uh, got the second motor out here. I figured it a prime opportunity to demonstrate on how to get the back caps off and rebuild it. So, you just want to try and gently prise this tab up here. Yeah. I don't want to put too much stress on this plastic, it's quite difficult to get in. But just prise upwards here, walk that tab out. Let's flip this around, do the same on this side. It's just a little easier in a bench vise, trying to do it freehand because you do have to. Bend these quite tightly. Get that up. And then you should be able to just prise upwards gently on the back of this cap and see. Okay, you might need to find a needle or something just to. In these back holes here, you see there's two viewing windows in the back of the commutator housing here just to get into the back of the brushes. It might be possible to... Just came straight off, okay. That was easier than I anticipated. Don't want to lose these the nylon washers here on the end, the float washers, you want to keep those on. It just stops the end float on the motor. That and they um, keep the brushes. I don't, I don't think the brushes would ever want to walk away, but, you know, keep them in place. There's still a fair, fair amount of brush material on there. What I did on the other ones, I just scraped them off very gently with a scalpel blade just to get rid of any glazing. But I'm pretty much going to do the same thing again here, guys. I'm just going to get the Scotch Bright clean off. You can see how badly charred that armature is. The commutator, should I say? Um, so the way I did it before was just gently prise this these float washers. See, so be really careful not to crack them, break them, so you get a bit of room to work in there. And I'm just going to grab a piece of scotch bright and just rotate the motor like this, just to clean the computer. Sorry about that, guys. Video ran out on the, uh, on the camera phone. But you get the idea on the rebuild, hopefully. Um, putting the brushes back in is just a case of... Um, what I actually do is slide the float washers down, uh, halfway down the shaft. And you can use the float washers to push the brushes apart and then just push the whole thing into the brush housing and it should all just slide back into the into the bush and everything so i'm just peening the um locking tabs back over here so just take a small screwdriver and just tap it on the, on the side there Same again, this side. You're never going to get it perfect, it just has to not wiggle about, so don't worry too much. So it's in there. 
You're going to put it one way around. This locating tab here has to line up. So. You can't really go far wrong. Um, yeah, that's it. Machine book went about. So that's good. Still spins. Take it back outside and we'll go and check it with the 9 volt battery. Um, check the resistance as well. Let's see where we're at. So there it is after the rebuild. And about 25 ohms in all positions. No nasty dead spots. Looking pretty good. Alright boys, we're back in business. We've got the electronic module here. Both actuators. That's locked, unlocked, and then double unlocked for the passenger door. The mechanics clip back onto the electronics module. Um, there's two little relief holes, um, viewing windows here and here, I found, and therefore pushing up inside to push the arms back on. So it's pretty well designed, well thought out. Props to Audi for that. It's actually yeah, pretty clever. So we got the um, arm here. The yellow arm wasn't moving up and down, so now it's in obviously a, a position where it could be opened. If I lock the car, the arm retracts, so the exterior handle would do nothing. And then when you double unlock, the arm moves. So now the actuator, just get the screwdriver, pushes on that. So if I close the striker arm, the uh, unlock it, unlock it, and it opens. And the striker arm is moved to the open position. So it's all good. Free fix. All it was is cleaning up the motors, just cleaning the commutators, the brushes are all good. So that's it. Now put all the cables back on, bolt it back into the door, door card on. Job jobbed.